Holy crap, it's the world's fastest processor, again. You know, if you look at the fine print, it says they're reaching the cutting edge of CPU frequency to release the fastest processor ever. But if you start reading between the lines and specifically down to the footnotes, you might notice that by fastest CPU, the only thing they mean is the frequency. Sure, it is fast. We are talking a 14900KS with a whopping 6.2 gigahertz max turbo frequency, apparently. Uh, it, that is the fastest, that's the fastest they've ever done. I mean, wow, packaging wise, they haven't changed anything in a while. I mean, this is in theory the last of a generation. The next Intel desktop CPUs are very likely going to be not monolithic anymore. And by that, I mean one single die. They're gonna be switching to a design somewhat similar to AMD with chiplets. But this is the new fastest processor, the Intel Core i9-14900KS. Uh, the video is done, I'm done unboxing it. You can see it right here, that is all you need to know. Jokes aside, it is a very similar CPU. You're talking the same core counts. You're talking the same architecture. The only thing that's really changed is the max turbo frequency and the power limits. Uh, you're looking at 6.2 gigahertz, like I mentioned earlier, which is up from six gigahertz on the 14900K. Was the 13900KS also six gigahertz, if I remember correctly? I'm getting a nod of approval, so yes. Uh, and the power limit, 320 watts on the PL1 and PL2 and 150 watt base power, which is insane. I mean, I think about my 13900K at home. If I turn MCE on with like no limits, with a 360 mil rad and an EK water block, just cooling it, I'm, I'm stuck at like 340, 350 watts with it sitting at 90 degrees. I don't see how this is gonna be that much better. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna draw a ridiculous amount of power. I mean, it has to. They want you without even turning MCE on to be hitting 320 watts on this thing. I can't imagine this is gonna perform that much better. I'm getting some weird looks, but seriously, there's not that much more to say. I mean, other than just trying it out, I suspect what's gonna happen is we plug this in and we look at the lab's results and this is going to perform marginally better, maybe a couple percent at drastically worse power, which is kind of how it usually is. This is a scary precedent is all I'm saying. I mean, you look at AMD, you get like a 7800X3D, that's a power efficient chip, really good for gaming. If you're just gaming, I don't know about this, <laughs> but hey, only a little bit prior judgment. Let's just see how it actually performs with this uh, cooler on here. What is this, the 360 mil? What do they call this, the Ryujin 360? It's like the easiest short circuit ever. <laughs> Guess what, nothing changed. <laughs> Our test bench is running, we're in Windows. I can't wait to see how obnoxiously power hungry this is, but not before I tell you about today's sponsor, Game Power. Reminiscent of some of the most popular PC cases on the market, the Warcry is a tried and tested fusion of style and substance. With six ARGB fans included, this mid-tower case supports ATX motherboards, full-size graphics cards, and 360 mil radiators. And its dual-sided tempered glass lets you enjoy the beauty of your build, whether you're in the heat of the game or need some additional illumination for that essay you're typing out. So check it out at the link down below and you can even save on your purchase. Do we have Cinebench? Let's run Cinebench. Yeah, I don't see Cine Cinebench. I mean, I can see it turboing. I see 5.9 gigahertz. I don't see 6.2. Cause that's, in theory, that's just in the most optimal of circumstances, one core will do that. That's the idea, likely. So here, let's do Cinebench, one core. Seeing a lot of 5.9. Oh, I see 6.2. Holy shit, right there, look at that. Oh, it went away. It was there for like a second. See, maximum 6.2, hell yeah. Intel marketing confirmed. They can do it, boys and girls. <laughs> I mean, it was there for like a second. Let's try again. Oh, look at that, 6.2. Holy shit. That was for s it. It recorded 6.2 on one second increment. That's it. Wow, I really feel like I'm getting what I paid for. <laughs> now I'm sure the average clock speeds are probably similar amount higher, but how much power are we drawing? Okay, this is only a single core test and we're, we're looking at 80 watts. Let's do multi-core. Let's see the big scary number. It's probably gonna be big and scary. I'm scared and I haven't even done it yet. <laughs> the AIO is like ripping now. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it, it hits 320 watts. The turbo power wasn't a lie. That's like out of the box, put it in a motherboard. 
it's doing 320 watts. I mean, with a 360 mil AIO, we're, we're just vibing at like 85. I'm gonna restart this thing and turn all the limits off. But in the meantime, let's look at the lab's results because that's more proper testing than I just did right there. But I was right, it draws a lot of power. <laughs> let's see if it actually performs any better. Now, before I look at these labs results, I'm gonna look at the price. <laughs> 700 US dollars, oh my God. A 4,900K, kind of the current retail suggested price is 560, which makes this a 140 US dollar upcharge. Oh my God. It's even more than a 7950X. Not that that is a well-priced CPU presently, but geez, let's look at how it performs. I bet you it's not gonna be $140 more. Hey, look, it's not. Oh my God, is it even better? Like Cyberpunk, exact same performance as the non-KS. F1 2023, three more FPS average. Red Dead, two more FPS average. The average of all of the games put together, one additional FPS. It's, it's weird to think that like 200 megahertz more is not a big deal anymore. But when you think about it, when you're already talking six gigahertz, you know, bumping up 200 megahertz more is, it's a lot smaller percentage and it, it shows. I mean, God, look at that. Non-gaming tests, it's actually slower in some circumstances, probably because it's thermal throttling would be my guess. It's really gonna depend on the cooler you have. Definitely make sure you're running this thing on like 360 mil AIO. I mean, can an NHD 15 even run this thing anymore? Probably not. Sort of can. Yeah, you basically just need a water cooler now. Just just custom cool your computer. You're spending 700 US dollars on a CPU. I mean, why not, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, with the Ryujin 3 360, Cinebench 2024, the average was 87 degrees on the 14900KS with a max of 100. If you turn on MCE with no limits, 96 degree average, 105 degree max, it's pretty much across the board, at least 10 degrees hotter. It's actually more than 10 degrees, 13 degrees hotter than a 14900K. I mean, that makes sense. We're talking like 250 watt to 320 watt power limit increase here. So yes, it's going to be hotter naturally. Oh my God, you guys measured 367 watts peak during the Cinebench run with MCE on. Oh my God. <sighs> That's literally more power than a Threadripper will draw without turning PBO on. That's insane. I mean, if you look across the board in terms of the amount of power you're consuming per frames, you are kind of delusional to go Intel if you live anywhere where power costs money. Is that safe to say? I don't know. Maybe if you live with your parents, you get free power, right? That's how that works. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Oh God. It's somehow slower in Cinebench multi-core, which is interesting. The single core, of course, is like a couple points higher, literally four points. Across the board, I could see these variations in just buying multiple CPUs. We've seen our own variations, at least on AMD, that were this large or larger even. But let's see how, how ridiculous it is in person. Remove all limits, no temp. Let's go. It reminds me of when, when they came out with the five gigahertz eight core and everyone was like, oh my God, that's so much power. Oh, <laughs> if we only knew where we were headed. 233, 358, 389, 389. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 380. <laughs> it's at 102 degrees though. You're just at a point where regardless of how much, you know, how many radiators you have, the size of the die is not big enough for this much power. Unless you're de-litting this thing like direct die cooling or you're putting probably a copper IHS on it or something like that. We're getting down after a little bit of chilling here, 370 watts-ish, and just, just casually idling at, um, 102 degrees. It's actually beyond. Wow, look at that. Oh God. You know what? It occurs to me. We have a 4090 here. What is a 4090 vibe at? Like 600 watts, 500 watts? This is almost a kilowatt of power draw. I guess if you, you take the power supply efficiency in there too, you're basically at a kilowatt of power draw if you were able or using an application that would load both your CPU and your GPU. Weren't we supposed to be saving the planet or something? 
It's not really faster aside from like a percent or two. I don't even know what to say. I mean, props to you, Intel. Congratulations, smack on the back. You made the world's fastest, technically speaking, frequency CPU. If only it was the fastest everywhere else. <laughs> it, it is very expensive. It is very high on power draw. Unless you're just like the dude that wants to have the most ball in his CPU at the LAN party. It, it's a flex thing. It's like the 8086K, you know? It's, it's purely just for ballers. If you hate money, you wanna light it on fire, do it. But otherwise, don't, <laughs> please. It's like I went on Amazon and sorted by most expensive. That's who this CPU is for. I'm a little sad. It's, it's basically the last monolithic Intel CPU. I can't imagine they're gonna be releasing anything else. Like, definitely not top tier. It's the end of an era. It's, it's just, this is the most that this could do. This is the send off. It's like when a rocket ship launches and it explodes midair before it gets there. That's what this feels like because it was hot. Good job, Intel. And good job for you for watching. Hit the like button, get subscribed. Maybe even check out the video that was also hot because we were in a hot tub. It was not heated. Bye.